So I started back down the path of trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the urban economics project. And there was a lot of different directions that I could go, but I knew that I wanted to to build something or to create something that was impactful and that, you know, would allow people to, you know, have something that was useful. Um, and, you know, I just thought that like bringing information forward and kind of this era of misinformation was really important. It gives you kind of an objective lens to look at things through. And, you know, I started to feel really passionate about that. At the same time, you know, always being passionate about education and what it can do for someone and kind of how it can change someone's life. So I'm like, OK, how can I start to bring these things together? So the first thing I did was I, I just came over here to BLS.gov. And this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They have surveys and they keep track of all these things like businesses depend on this data to be accurate in order for, um, you know, them to do forecasting or any type of models like that. So I come here. And I was really just curious about, like, you know, how much are people making based off of uh, education attainment levels? So, you know, and like break that down by race as well and, and gender. Right. So I found that they have um, data sets with all that stuff. So I can break down uh, income by, you know, black, African-American, Asian, Hispanic, white men, women. Uh, and then all kinds of different education levels, but it doesn't let me break it down by race, gender, and education level. So I came over here to Excel, and I'm like, all right, let me pull down the data, let me do some manipulations myself. So this is just the data set for men, all races, 25 years and older who have obtained a bachelor's degree. This is how much they make uh, quarter three, 2007, uh, weekly. Right. But I also pulled down the male demo. So Hispanic male makes this weekly. So this is the median. So 50 percent of Hispanic males make an income higher than this. 50 percent of 50 uh, percent of Hispanic males make an income less than this. Right. And I pulled these values for all males. Right. And then I started to say, well, if I really wanted to figure out the question that I was going for a outcome or an output that is combines all three of these uh, gender, race, and education attainment level, then I needed to figure out some way to weight the value or to uh, find a common denominator. And in this instance, it's male, right? So, and then I took a look at this value. I'm like, okay, well, Asian is the highest earner in this category, right? So what if I took equals this number divided by this number. So this is telling me that black males quarter three, 2017, made 60, about 65% of what Asian males made, right? And then what if I translated this number to this number, right? So let's assume that this is a weighted value, right? And we just start to weight these numbers based off of the highest earner from this demo, the male demo, uh, the, the male Asian, right? So we weight that, that value. And that's what I do here. And that's what this gives me this value. So if you can see here, this is D31, which is the earnings for a male who's completed a bachelor's degree. And then I do the same weighting calculation here, D14 divided by N14. So D14, I'm sorry, this is Hispanic male. D14 divided by N14, right? And it gives you Hispanic male, right? And then I can do something like this equals this number times 52, because that's how many weeks we have in a year. Now we don't want this to be a percentage, we want this to be a dollar. And if anybody, and people that are out in the workforce are kind of look at that number and say, okay, well, $46,200, that's a yearly or annual income. Okay, so I had the concept down. Like, okay, this is how you find a value. And although it is an approximation, I looked at the way that they create the surveys and they do hold the sample size constant across all of these. Um, so you don't have big fluctuations in that. And for the proof of concept, which is what this is right now, I'm only pulling the median value. So for all of these values, 
of incomes are higher than this, 50% of incomes are lower than this. So same thing with for bachelors. 50% of people make higher than this, 50% of people make lower than this. And you can assume the same thing here. 50% of Hispanic males with a bachelor degree make higher than this, an income higher than this, and 50% of uh, Hispanic males with a bachelor degree make lower than this, right? So that's the core assumption that I'm making it. And it's one su assumption that I got to make to got to get to the final product. But the other piece of it is like, okay, well, BLS is pretty dope because they also give you a public data API. And if anyone's familiar with that, that's application protocol interface. So that's like if I want to communicate back and forth with BLS.gov and I want to say, yo, give me this data. You know, let me hold that. I can hold it wherever I want to, be it an application, a website, whatever I want to do with it. This is how we communicate back and forth. And then I'm like, at the same time, I'm like, all right. I was trying to learn um, a new coding language. It was basically a framework. And that's how this started to come about, right? So let me kind of close all this out. But you will see some familiar items here. So... If you think about this right here, uh, and let me draw one, uh, let me make one point here as well. I'll do the same thing for females, but for this calculation, I could have gave you a, an extremely, um, I could have weighted the female value based on male, Asian male, um, but I decided to only do uh, the Asian female who was the highest earner in that demographic because the way that they report the earnings by education attainment level was based off of um, female as well. So I didn't want to mix that up because remember here the common denominator was male so I had to keep the common denominator uh, the same with female as well. So there's kind of females interact within their own, males interact within their own. But you can assume that the values, or you can you can know that the values that I'm reporting for female, if you did weight those against the male value right here, you would have lower averages. So I will draw that here. But I'll also bring this up. So once I started to build the application, I took weeks and weeks just learning how to do it, and I was on Pluralsight.com, and I was learning this so I could be more proficient at my job. But then I was like, okay, well, if you really want to learn something, then set a mission and set some goals. And if you have a mission like creating content for a scholarship fund and, you know, kind of a goal that you're working towards, you know, being able to complete these calculations, then it makes it a little bit easier to learn something. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I started to learn a little bit more. I, and then I created, and you can see by the file structure, what's going on here. So female, African, American with an advanced degree. And this is like a view or a component. And each of these are accessible when you hit the application. So there is a view that allows for you to see male, Asian, bachelors, you know, all of those items. And if you think about a normal website, this is like the, the home page here, right? This for an Angular application, so I'm building an Angular. This is Visual Studio Code, but this is the brains of the operation. This holds all the logic that I'm importing and all the logic that I'm exporting as well. And this really kind of sets the whole structure for the application. And I call it a single page application, or it's called a single page application because it's not a standard website. It downloads all of this logic into your browser right when you hit the page. That's why it's so fast when you go through it and you're kind of clicking through it because it's not making individual server calls, right? But then I was like, okay, so let's keep building. Let's keep building. Let's figure out how to actually pull the data down. And I realized, hey, I got some experience on the front end side of it. I know how to kind of build out some HTML, some CSS, but it was a monster trying to figure out how to actually pull in the data. But I'll show you what I did. So I created what's called a service. And a service is basically what gives, introduces logic or what kind of orchestrates the data on the back end. So if you can see, I'm creating a variable 
for data that's sitting inside of the application. So all of these assets here sit within the application and they kind of come along with it. And oh, look, this looks kind of familiar. Year 2017, quarter four. Uh, updated the data here because quarter three wasn't uh, was it the the most recent that I had, but now I updated it with quarter four, right? So this data service actually is calling those local files. But how did I get that data from bls.gov? Well, here it is. I actually make these server calls here, and I can follow this link. And oh look. Uh, well, I reached my uh, daily limit for server calls because um, you actually they they basically stifle the amount of times that you're able to make service calls. Let me see. Yeah. So, but you could follow this link right here, and you would actually be able to obtain that same data set, that JSON data set. And what I do is I just pull it down and I save it into those files. But this is the reason why I didn't make live calls to bls.gov because if I made live calls, just like what just happened, you would um, the application would shut down because you wouldn't be able to pull the data in because they uh, say that you can only make a few data calls a day, right? So I'm pulling in the data, but what you actually have to do here is I had to start to organize it. So if you think about it, there's only a few different unique pieces of data. Um, there's 40 total components, so if you think about it, um, male, woman, that's two, five levels of education, and then there are four different ethnicities. So two times four, eight times five, 40, right? So there's 40 different components here, 40 of these, but I don't need 40 different types of data. I really only need, I believe this is 18, right? So I need female advanced, female associates, female bachelor, female grads, female less than uh, high school, male advanced, right, all the way down. And then female African-American, female Asian, female, all of those all the way down, right? And then I create a separate function to pull down African-American, male African-American URL, which correlates right back here. So remember we created this, male African-American, all right, give me that data, right? And then I do the, all the same thing here, male Asian, uh, male white, male Latino. And then within each of these views, I actually have the logic for that specific view. So what this data service is doing is it is grabbing the data and exposing it to the full application, but we don't actually do anything with the data until a component subscribes to the data. So we're subscribing to the data here. And this is literally what took me so long to complete. This like literally hurt my soul trying to complete this. I'm talking about months and months to do this. Well, I'll call it a month. I'll give myself a credit. <laughs> but so, so that's what's going on here. And you can see that it uses something called, um, you know, dot notation. So I only want the most recent value. So if you think about an index, an index is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0 would be the most recent value. So I only want the most recent value. That's what I'm returning here. And then within the actual HTML structure, and this is what you'll view when you see the website, you can see the calculation that I'm doing. So sometimes you'll go to a component and you'll see that it takes a little bit and then the value populates. It's because it's doing a calculation on the front end. So this should look kind of familiar to you, right? What are, what are we doing here? The same thing that we did here in this Excel spreadsheet, right? We, this is the exact calculation that we did. So we do this calculation first. We get the weight, multiply it by the education attainment level income. And then we make sure that it looks pretty, gives it a currency and multiplies it by 52. So what this is, and this logic took me forever to figure out, but I had to put an or statement in here. So if advanced degree or African-American or Asian is available, and when I mean available, that means that the data is pulled down correctly from the data service and we've subscribed to it so that there is a value there. So a value is present. Let me get the, the year, 
let me get the period name, and for income, let's do this calculation. Advanced degree times African American value divided by Asian value times 52, and I give you, and then we trans, uh, and then we use a pipe to make it into a USD currency, right? And that is performed for all of these different services. And you'll see here, um, as I referenced this earlier, for females, we actually do um, all female, so female Asian. So before, you know, if I wanted to, I could just do male Asian and it would uh, weight this against how much the highest order makes. And you can assume that, yes, your value would uh, kind of go down. But statistically, that's not correct because we need that common point which is gender in order to kind of do that calculation. Um, so that's kind of like the, the, the heart of the application. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but that's really what's going on here. Um, so when you visit the application, you can feel confident that the data that I'm returning to you is real data. And I'm telling you exactly the calculations that are happening on the back end.